Okay, this video today is going to uh, dive deep into um, the supply chain sharing feature within Flutter Files. This is a feature that's one of the most popular features within Flutter Files. And the purpose for this feature is to provide uh, a link to your external suppliers or partners um, that contains all the drawings that they need and will always contain the latest revision of each drawing and will provide a lot more than just the drawing. And we're going to dig into that and all the capabilities around that. All right, so I've already have a demo account set up and this is what my, once I've logged in, this is what it looks like in the main web application. So everything today is going to be uh, within the, the main web application. Um, and I'm going to just select a handful of drawings. Um, these are the four or five drawings that right now I want to share with a, a supplier. We're going to click the big share button. It says these five items will be shared. You type in an email address. So I'm going to type in my email address. And then we'll do a second email address just to show that this works with multiple email addresses. Then you're going to type in a unique password for this specific link. So this, each link, um, you know, these links don't require an account for your vendors, but this link in some ways is its own account and can be fully managed and maintained. You can change the password at any point. You can change the settings. Uh, typically, you're going to email the recipients right away, or you may say, you know, I want to test this link first before I notify them that the, the link exists. So we'll uncheck that. You can set an expiration date. If you're going out to quote with a supplier, uh, and you want the date to expire in a week or two weeks or however it may be, you can do that. Uh, expiration date doesn't delete the link and allows you to continue to use the link um, later on. So you can re-enable it. Uh, but when it expires, everyone will lose access. They won't be able to log in and actually view the link. You can also have the, uh, edit the options. There's a lot of options. Um, and these are fully editable at any point. So you can manage this link moving forward. Um, for today, let's um, let's leave the, the settings as they are. I will also mention that these default settings, you can configure what those default settings are within your company settings. And you can also prevent users from being able to modify those settings if you if you choose to. So let's go ahead and click share and create this new link. Now it, it, it pops up a, a message box saying a shared link already contains the external email addresses entered. Would you like to continue with the new link creation or add the items to an existing link? Now what we're going to do for this demo is create a new link. Normally, there's probably most of the time if you have an email address that you're sharing with externally, most of the time you would want to just add it to the existing because they already have a link, they already have a password, they already have access to 5, 10, 15 files, and you're just creating a new link of five or six more files. Let's just add those to the existing link. And if there's duplicates, it won't add it twice. It'll just add it one time. It checks to make sure the item hasn't already been added. Uh, but this will prevent you from ending up with three, four, five links for the same supplier when there's really no reason for there to be more than just one link containing all 15, 20, 100, or 1,000 drawings that they need access to. Uh, but for demo purposes, we'll go ahead and click Create New Link. You can see items have been shared now. And under My Shared Items, um, it now says that there's just 20 My Shared Items. And you can see at the very bottom, we have today's date um, with the parts list that we, we added. So there's four or five drawings listed there. Uh, you can click on the link button and it'll actually show the link that was generated for this. Um, and on the far right hand side, I want to go ahead and add some notes here uh, saying that uh, this is a test vendor link. Um, this allows you to identify it and it'll show up a little bit later as, as pretty useful to have that filled out. Uh, you can reset the password at any point. You can add and remove email addresses. And of course, as I mentioned previously, you can edit all of the options. But we'll come back and we'll edit some options. But first, Let's just take a look and see what this link looks like. We'll click on the link URL. That'll open up the tab. So this will be as if they received the email. They'll receive this link and they will enter the password that was included in the email that will give them access to it. Enter the password, you click enter. And you can see we have a, a lightweight version of Flutter files here in the web application. This is all within, uh, within the browser showing just the five or six items. Uh, in this case, the five items that they have access to. This is fully searchable, so they can do a search on that. Uh, so if there was hundreds of items, they could still find what they needed. 
Um, you can view additional property data and you can control which are shown initially for your vendors uh, and which are shown, uh, uh, you know, which are available for them as well. Now to view an item, the vendor will just simply double click on the item and they'll view the item right here within the browser. Just as simple as that. We click the show list, we come back to it and you can view another item and you can go through the, through the shared list and view all of the items that they need to. They'll have the ability to print the item if they need to. You can actually block the ability to print. And right now for this link, they only have access to download the actual PDF. Now let's return back to this shared link and let's edit some options. The first thing I want to do is I want to hide previous revisions. I don't want them to be able to access previous revisions. And I want to include generic CAD files. Um, and, let's, and let's hide the print option just so I can show you that. So there's just to make a couple changes to it. The other thing I want to do is I want to add a few more items to it. So let's select a few of these items down here. We'll right click and say add to existing share. So we're going to add a couple more items that this vendor needs access to. You click that and then we'll select the link. It says would you like to resend the shared link? We'll say no just so that um, I don't receive an email for no reason. Click on the parts list and you can see that the two new items down here at the bottom, we went from five items to seven items, have been added. We return back to the link. Now we've made a couple changes to the options. We've also added a few items to it. So if we reload that link, normally they'll receive an email, they'll click the link again. We reload that link, enter the password again, and there's the new list of items. You can see there's the two new items down here. So if we double click that item, they now have access to it. And I don't know if you noticed before, but there used to be a, a backwards button and a forward button. Those have been removed because we don't have access to previous revisions. If you go to the download option, you'll see now not only do you have download the PDF, you also have a download option for a step file, an STL file, and an all option. If there was an IGS file uploaded, that would be listed here, etc. because you've given them access to those generic CAD files. In addition, if they click the history button, they get a history of everything that has occurred for this item. So they can see that you've added two new items to it. So they get an email listing that there's been an update to this item. It'll tell them which items have been updated, but then if once they're viewing the item, they can also click on the history button to see that list in chronological order of all the items that have changed, either new revisions or if they've added items, etc. It will show up here in the history list. If we return to this uh, list, uh, oftentimes your suppliers are making parts for you on a regular basis and you may start to make a design change. And so unlike a PDF that you email to someone, you have full control of what they see each time they view it on Flutter Files. And so Flutter Files remains, keeps the content linked back to the original source data. So it recognizes that you've begun modifying the drawing. Um, or if you're using a PDM system, it'll see that it's no longer in the release state. Um, and so when they try to view an item, either internally as a, a viewer within your company or your external suppliers and vendors, when they try to view an item that's currently being modified, they'll receive a warning message that says this item is currently in the process of being modified. This warning message is fully uh, customizable. Uh, you can have it say whatever you would like. In addition, if you would prefer not to show a warning message and still show the drawing and instead not show the drawing and show a, a different warning message, then you can change that in your settings as well. Uh, and you can prevent them from being able to have access to it. Because right now, if they just click OK, they still have access to Rev0, even though Rev1 may be in the process of being created. Uh, whereas if you change that setting, they won't see Rev0. Instead, they'll just see the message. Um, so just as before, you have full access to, uh, to all of these items, and they can you know, search for it and find the item that they need. That's what it looks like from the vendor's point of view. And from a management standpoint, there's additional options in here. Um, you know, one of the really important ones that was already checked was email recipients when items change. So uh, just like it was shown in that history list, they will receive an email notifying them when items change, which will save you a lot of time. So if you add an item to it, they, they get an email. If you add a revision, they automatically get notified that same day that you've added a revision to these two or three items and they can ha immediately have access to those latest revisions. So this is a huge time saver. Every time, you know, in the past, if you share a PDF with someone, every single time that that PDF, you know, that drawing changes, you have to update the PDF and then you have to remember to send it to all the suppliers that have access to it. With this, you create these shared links one time 
then everybody, then all your suppliers have access to that item. And as the item changes, they automatically are notified and they automatically have access to the latest revision. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is access stats um, and the ability to be able to view I, view when your suppliers access your items and what they access. So under my shared items, for users that have the ability to share items for one, um, they have the my shared items, they have the ability to do that. In addition, if you give them the ability to view these access stats, this is a, a separate setting, so not everyone will have this access settings. It's, it's up to you as the company administrator to determine who can view the access stats. But if you click on access stats, it's gonna, and we're gonna click the refresh button here, and sure enough, we've got a few new items listed here from all the work we just did. Um, and you'll see that this support at flatterfiles.com has been logged in. And you can see down here on today's date, we logged in. Uh, you can see under the notes column, it's this test vendor link, which is the, the my shared item, you know, list under my shared items, the, the link that we created. We logged in, we viewed this item, we viewed rev A of it. Then we viewed rev C zero of this item and these two items, and then this item as well. So we've got a full uh, tracking ability of everything that that vendor does when they log in, what actions occurred, you know, what did they view, did they download. If we go back to this, this viewer link um, and let's click, um, let's click the download button and let's download the step file for this particular item. Okay, so that downloaded that. If we come back to this and we click refresh, You'll see we now have a new entry located here called download as the action with a file type equal to step. Uh, it's got the notes listed. It's got what part number, what revision we downloaded, the description, and then a custom property that you can add in here. Right now we've got this customer ID listed, uh, but this could be any other property that you want to include that's fully configurable. So this is really powerful. This allows you to know exactly how they're using their link, uh, their, the, the link that you've provided them, what they're viewing, what they're downloading. So you can make sure they have the latest content. You know, this can be used for a couple different scenarios. One, um, you've got a deadline approaching. Um, the, the product's due by a certain a, a date. Um, it's a tight deadline. And you want to make sure that they are viewing the latest drawing um, by, you know, certain by Monday. You know, if the product's due on Friday, it takes them a few days to make it. If they haven't logged in by, by the previous Friday or that Monday, you know that, that there's going to be an issue and you can call them. Uh, another scenario is... They say that they never received the drawing. Well, now you have proof that not only did you receive the link, uh, but you actually ac accessed it and viewed the drawing. Um, so this is all about you know not being uh, you know this is your data, so you have the ability to view what they're doing with your data. Uh, it also can help from a security standpoint, just so that you know uh, how many times they viewed it and and everything. I will tell you that duplicate entries are are not included. So if they view the same item multiple times. You know, like this SB02 right here. If we come back to this uh, and we try to view it again, so we viewed it again, we switch back to that drawing. If we come here, there won't be a new entry because it's a it's a complete duplicate. It happened on the same day, the same person, same action, same file type. Um, you know, everything, same part number, everything is the exact same. So there's no reason to show that again. Uh, but once again, this is really powerful. You know, as new revisions are created, they'll automatically have access to it. You've got a full ability to uh, to see and get insight into exactly what your vendors are doing with your drawings and when they're viewing them and how often they're viewing them. Um, and if they get that, you know, that new revision goes out, there's an update. Uh, you can immediately see if they've viewed the new revision or if they've just viewed the old revision. Um, so this is a this is a very popular feature, um, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Uh, diving into uh, these external shared items. Thank you.